All right. Good afternoon, ladies. I think we're all ladies. Welcome to another Lunch and Learn brought to you by the Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning. How are you doing? I know that it's Lunch and Learn and, 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 and some of you are having lunch and, and that's good. So we're trying to make it um, shorter than one of the three hour sessions. Mm, but we don't want you to give up your lunch. So we're happy that while you're having lunch, you're here learning about how you can engage your students more or make the teaching and learning experience more enriching. Today, we're going to be looking at the whole matter of developing a system of rewards using digital badges. And my name is Michelle Stewart McCoy. I am the faculty educational developer for Settle. And although we are looking at it within a teaching learning experience, the whole matter of designing and setting up a system for your digital badges is not limited to teaching and learning. All right. So we're looking at the whole idea of how do you think through, conceptualize and come up with a structure for your badges. Now, one of the first things that we need to bear in mind is the whole idea of what is the vision Okay, so we're not focusing on creating badges today. We're looking at a bigger ecosystem, if you will. So the first thing you need to think of, what is the vision that your unit, that your department, that your faculty has as it relates to digital badges? Okay, when we talk about that, do we understand exactly what digital badges are, the purpose that they serve, and the types that exist. So there ought to be a clear understanding with those who are going to be involved in the process, what you mean by digital badges, the different types that exist, the purpose that you're using for. The other thing that you need to think about is your unit, your, your, your department, your faculty, consider the context, all right? So think about the reality that exist. Think about the number of persons you have, whether or not you're going to have to, to consider the whole matter of, of tiers. I like to use the, the acronym tiers. So think of time of factors, okay? How much time will it need for you to be doing these things? Uh, how much time do you have for the creation, for the planning, all of that? Think of the expertise. Do you have somebody in-house who can create your badges? Do you have to reach out to external sources? How much is this going to cost you if you're going to be reaching beyond the walls of your, your context, your situation, your environment. Then think of access. Where can you get? How easily can you get the resources you need, the information you need, the human resource that you may need? Think of the resources that you're going to need. Are you going to be, as I said before, going with a unit that does this externally? Are you go Do you have the funds to, to, to compensate them? Do you have the material if you're going to develop? Do you have the platform? So think about the resources. And then think about the support. Is it that you really need digital badges within your system? And if you do, do the students support the use of it? Does your head of department support the use of it? Support you and what it is you're trying to do? Does the, the university, does the faculty support this. So consider your tears in all of that. Consider the realities within your your, pers your your respective unit, department, faculty. Okay. So that is one of the first things that you need to be clear on. What is my vision? Ask yourself the question, do I really need to have digital badges within my, my engagement with my students or with others? If you say not really, it means that it ain't broke, don't fix it, okay? So clearly, whatever it is you're currently doing is working and is working well. Don't introduce badges just for the sake of introducing digital badges. If you 
think that this is something that would enhance that experience with you and your students, then think about this, this framework, this, this strategy, this structure within which you would develop your badge. So before we reach the actual stage of developing our digital badges so that our students can get it, there are a number of other things that we need to think about. So we have to think about the focus of the badge. All right. Will the badge that we're the digital badges that we're thinking of? Will they be focusing on competence or achievement? Or will they be focusing on participation and engagement? Or is it a case that your focus will be a dual one where you're, you're focusing on both the achievement component and the engagement aspect of it? All right. Now, although I keep referring to digital, digital badges, please bear in mind that it, it We can use them for badges that are not digital as well. So if you're using a reward system, whether digital badges or analog badges, as I refer to them, the same mindset and, and planning and, and, and conceptualization applies. So think about the focus of your badge. The next thing that you want to do is think about the approach that you're going to take, okay? Are you going to go for the achievement approach? Now, the achievement approach is one in which your badges are, are awarded based on the outcome, based on that final grade, that, 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 that competence. It does not show process. It does not show the different stages that the student engages in. It focuses on that end result. Okay. So is that the approach that you're going to use? Or are you going to be using that participatory approach where the focus is more on engagement and learning and, and tracking that kind of process, okay? So you'll also have to think about the focus of the, the badges and think about the approach that you will take. When you have the approach, you then ask yourself, what type of badge am I thinking of here? Is the badge going to be representing assessment? Is it for learning? Will it be showing critical thinking experience? Will it be about teamwork? Will it be for attendance? Because in some cases, attendance may be critical in what it is that you're doing. Is it about participation or engagement? Is it about the development or the achievement of certain skills and competencies? Or is it something else? If something else comes from your particular reality. So it really depends on your unit, your department, your faculty. This may not, the, the, the list that I have here may not be relevant. It may be something that's totally different. So think about these things. And then when you think along those lines, so we think about the focus, we think about the approach, we think about the type, think about whether or not you're going to be using a, a badge class structure or a hierarchy structure. If it's a hierarchy, it means that it is tiered. If it's tiered, it means that the badges have some kind of relationship with each other and that the students would then, or your, your whoever your, your participants are, they would be gaining these badges based on succeeding levels of competence or engagement. So if you... Excuse me, if you look at this breakdown, there is the, the they ought to get these two badges in order to get this badge. OK, they must get all these three badges in order to get this badge. So that shows that kind of tiered level. Are you going for that? Is it that students must complete certain tasks, be awarded a badge in order to go? So these are ideal for mastery levels, if you will. So you start with beginners, they get two beginners, then they get a, you know, an intermediate and then they get three intermediate before they get a master level badge. So that is something that you can think about. Or is it that you're simply going to think about a class? structure where all the badges are individual not related to each others at um, to each other at all they're on the same level and they all have equivalent skill or or, or competence achievement or engagement level so think about it. Do you want to have different badges that are all on the same level or do you want to have a tier a hierarchy all right and then in 2022, Sherry Baxter talks about the idea of us using a digital badge taxonomy, something that is closely aligned to the 
the Bloom's taxonomy. Now we're all, or we all should be familiar with Bloom's taxonomy, yes? Can I get a hallelujah? Yes. Okay, thank you. So Bloom's taxonomy moves from low level thinking skills to higher level thinking skills. And so Baxter proposes that when we are thinking about our digital badge ecosystem and thinking of our digital badge strategy, that what we should try and do is to have a taxonomy with our badges, our digital badges, that is closely aligned to the Bloom's taxonomy. So as you can see, there is there are several aspects to this. So we have a tier that moves from participation, knowledge, skill to ability. And then from attending, remembering and understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and uh, creating. And we see that tier where the broad base, which is the simpler area, has to do with mere engagement. And then there is a level of awareness, the development of proficiency, and then, of course, demonstration of mastery. And I like this part particular taxonomy. It's simple. It is, it is easy for you to then look at the Bloom's taxonomy, look at the kinds of verbs and action verbs that um, words that are there and see how in developing your, your digital badges, you can actually have these layers, you know. So this is something that is worth taking a second and third look at. So this is from Sherry Braxton looking at a digital badge taxonomy. So so far we have considered our context, okay? Um, we have uh, we have been looking at the whole idea for the need for us to consider a vision as it relates to our digital badge structure. We need to understand exactly what we mean by digital badges, what they do, whether or not it would work for us. If we have come to the, the agreement that we believe that digital badges have a place and we want to see how well we can use it with our students, with our participants. The next thing is for us to consider the purpose, the, the type, and the approach that we will use. So what is the purpose of our badge? What types will we be thinking of? What is the approach that we'll be using? Is it a, an achievement-based approach or is it a participatory-based approach? Now, after we have done that kind of thinking through, and if, you, if you're a pen and paper person, it is good for you to work these ideas out. And if you're not a one-man team, then you liaise, you have roundtable meeting, you, you connect so that the discussion can be richer and that you can have shared insights. After you've had that kind of discussion and you have your proposal where you have outlined these different things, you then go on to the aspect of designing and developing your badges. And I have here metadata. When we talk about a strategically developed, conceptualized and developed badge, we are thinking about things that make it exceptionally clear to the persons who are seeing this badge. So the kinds of information that is attached to the badge is critical. And this is referred to as our metadata. All right. Now, we need to have a name. What is the name of the badge? Don't call it badge one or don't call it part participation badge. Ensure that the name that you have for the badge, especially since we don't have what are called meta tags. Meta tags are little codes that are written in for those companies that deal with, with, with badge, badge development and assignment. So meta tags, if you click on a badge or you hover over it, it gives you all this information. In our context, where most of us are using the Moodle platform, what we need to do is to ensure that when we come up with a name, the name is clear. If it's a, if it's a, if it's a hierarchical badge, it needs to be clear that this badge is at the beginner's level or at the intermediate level or at the expert level. If it's a badge that has to do with a particular skill set or competence, put it in the name, all right? You're not going to write a paragraph, but ensure that the name is short and that it is specific all right, so make your, your badge name be smart, okay? Well, smart enough. So it's clear, it's specific what it is, what it's about, and it indicates the level, all right? The other thing is that we need to 
in, in after we come up with a name, we need to design, consider the type. Is this badge for an engagement purposes? Is it for participation? All right. So when we think about the types and the name, we are beginning to build together the kinds of information that we need. We also need to think about the description. What is the purpose of the badge? Why are the, 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 the participants getting this badge? What is this badge for? Okay. And what is the criteria? What must they do in order to get this badge? Is it that they're going to do one thing? Is it that they're going to do a series of things? Is it that they simply need to turn up? And we are reminded that we shouldn't just give students badges well because they turn up. Usually badges are given because of something that the student does. All right. What, what, where is the evidence? So what do I see if I go into the course and I see that a student has gotten this badge? Will I also see the evidence that says, yes, this is what the student has done and this is why the student has gotten the badge, all right? When you're thinking about this, something that just thought um, popped up in my head that I didn't write, think about whether or not you're going to issue the badge manually or automatically. So this is where within the Moodle platform, the completion aspect comes in. So you can decide that um, the students will get the badge based on the fact that they have completed this particular quiz and that they have responded to the forum. And so you don't have to go in and then give the badge manually. If you have to go in and give the badge manually, it must be because you, you, you have a particular reason and the reason may be you need to double check or reach out to other persons. So think about how you will award the badge manually or automatically. All right. So we're still thinking what assessment activity is going to be tied to this the badge. OK, so what tasks will you be giving the students in order for them to do the activity so you can see the evidence so that they can be awarded the badge, whether it's at a beginner, intermediate mastery level or if it's a standalone badge okay what is the minimum requirement in 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 the tiered level you may want them to carry out two tasks out of three is there a minimum level is it a case that you're thinking that no in order for them to get this particular badge they have to do all the things so these are things that you have to consider when you're doing the design and when you're thinking of your badge okay how much time will they get to earn the badge? Is there a time constraint on it? If they wait too long, is, is it possible for them to still get the badge? And again, this aspect is tied in with the restriction feature. So you can set up your badge and you can look at the restriction feature in, in Moodle, in RVLE, and you can decide that they will earn this badge after a certain period of time, before a specific time, after they have completed other things. So this is something that we need to consider as well. And then consider the relationship in the hierarchy. If you're looking at a tiered system, is this badge um, an equal in a series or is this badge the first one that they must get in order to move up or is this particular badge the last badge that they will be getting so consider that kind of relationship and then you have to think again is this a, a cumulative meaning it is in a tiered a hierarchical structure or is this a standalone badge once they get it that is it there's nothing else that they have to get in order to to move on all right so this these are some of the things that we need to think about and will you put an expiration date on the badge which means that after a certain period has passed the badge will disappear all right or will no longer be valid for teaching and learning purposes, it is good if we don't put an expiration date on it, but it, again, it depends on your contextual realities. Any any questions so far? Am I going too fast? Are you good with, with, the, with the presentation so far? Go ahead, Olivine. Um, I was wondering if you can do something like a, a competition where Olivine has three three badges, mm -hmm. but finished the work in two days mm -hmm. versus Diane has three badges, but finished the work in a week. 
So Olivine is like leader, you, you know, leaderboard kind of mm-hmm. things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So the current, there is a, a, a block in the more recent versions of, of Moodle. So the, the version that we're currently using is 2.7. The current version is 4. Point something. Um, from version 3.0, I think. Yeah, I think from about version 3.0 or 2.9. There is a block that's called the, the leaderboard. So it's a level up. And it does exactly what what you're saying, Olivine. So you set up your activities and so forth. And what it does, it awards points. So you can go in, look at the ladder, see who is at the top and see how quickly that person has completed the activities and the different types of activities. Now, in the absence of a, a level up block or a leaderboard, you can work it out and do it in such a way that when you go into the restrict access aspect, you set it up in such a way that if it is done in X time, they get this particular color or particular shape batch so that it shows you that, okay, this person did it in, in two days, this person did it in a week. It will require more time and it will require significant fleshing out on paper, but it is something that you could set up. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thanks a lot. Okay. One of the things that I love about the idea of working on paper first, all right? Remember that this is not a workshop here. So if you want to stop me and ask questions, we want to have the discussion. One of the things I love about this is that if you can think about it, if you can conceptualize it and work it out on paper, chances are you can build it exactly how you want it in the absence of uh, an app or a, 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 a function, a feature in or VLE, in the Moodle or VLE that does that. So the idea that you just presented Olivine is something where you have that particular block that deals with it. You don't have to do that kind of additional work, but we are not there yet. So until we reach there, we can work it out, do the flow chart that says, okay, I will put this particular badge with this particular achievement in this particular time, and you set up your restrictions accordingly. All right. Okay, thanks. No problem. Okay, so let me continue. So we were at the expiration date. Um, and then, so we have thought about the design of the badge. So the next thing that we want to think of is, in addition with the designing, and this may work with the design aspect, you have to think about the sourcing. So we're thinking about the design aspect and now we start to think about developing. There are several ways that you can develop your badge. If you are, and again, it goes back to your contextual reality. If you are within a unit and you have funds and you can outsource, there are a number of digital badge strategy units, platforms. So these places will, at a cost, um, have a discussion with you, understand where it is you're going, what it is you want exactly, allow you to use their platform. They will develop your badges for you based on specifications, of course, and they will insert that code so that this is made available and it is clear what it is it, the, the each badge represents. So you can outsource and you have many places that you can do that at a cost. If you find that based, again, on your, your particular environmental reality, that you are going to try this in-house, it means that you're going to have to do everything within your unit, okay? Now, although you may be a one-man or a two-man, two-woman team, it doesn't mean that you can't reach out to the respective units on the campus. So we have a teaching and learning unit. We have mates here on the Mona campus. Um, other persons will have a unit that deals specifically with teaching and learning or te educational technology. You can reach out to units, OK, you can also reach out to us here in the settle. So say you're thinking of this strategy. This is the plan you have. Can we, you know, work on develop developing? So you can start by, you know, have a number of things. It is clear to you what the vision is. 
you have thought about the focus, you have thought about the purpose, you have the type that you're going to use, you have a specifically a specific approach that you're going to use, your approach may be one or the other, or a combined approach. So you may go for the achievement based approach, or you may go for the participatory approach, or you may do a little bit of both. But you have already done that you have you have gone through the matter of looking at what are the different things you need to, to bear in mind. Um, you have considered your course. You have looked at your objectives. You have looked at your content because all of this, nothing is distinct. Everything interrelates. You have considered using a digital badge taxonomy. And because of that, you have looked again at the whole um, Benjamin Bloom's taxonomy. You have scrutinized the verbs, looked at the levels of, of mastery for your, your badge, and you have a clear idea. All right. So you're ready to go. You're rearing. You're excited. You source the graphics that you need. So depending on the name of the badge and the type, you're going to need an image that is appropriate, okay? Now, the image that you find may be an image that represents what it is you're trying to showcase, but you're also going to need, in addition to that particular graphic, a holder. So you're going to need a badge holder to insert. So you're going to be looking for images that represent the holding space. So you can decide that your badge is going to be circle, it's going to be a shield, it's, you know, different shapes. And then you're going to think about the image that will represent what it is you want to do. We, I could easily say go on Google and search, but in an age where online has become the norm, where everybody is now on the online space, I caution us, okay? Please remember that we have to be responsible in the online space. So if you find an image that has a watermark, please do not use that. Okay, that's the first no-no. If you find an image, please acknowledge that this image belongs to this particular person. Unless, of course, you are using open source images where it doesn't matter. I still tend to say if you're using open source, still give credit. Give on to Caesar what is due to Caesar. So be careful with how you source and use infographics. Okay. So find an appropriate graphic and consider the holder and the, 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 the representation of the, the, the graphic itself, okay? When you are thinking of developing your badges, it may be a good idea to group your badges, especially if you are using badges within a tiered level, that hierarchical component. So you may want to group your badges by shape, by elements, by the different categories, by different classifications. Okay, that way it gives consistency and it, it makes it more organized. So you know that these are beginner level. And by color, you may also want to consider grouping your badges by color. So you know that the green would be maybe the, the novice level and blue intermediate and yellow, you know, whatever. You can decide. But consider grouping them for consistency purposes, or organizational purposes, and for easy logistics, okay? Then think about your batch platform. Because we are facilitators and because we have a space that allows us to operate, so I'm talking about the RVLE or Moodle platform, um, think about housing your, your badges there. We do know that even with the 2.7 version, we can manage, we can create. And please note that when we talk about creating badges on the Moodle platform, we are really talking about using the badge that has already been created, creating a name holder and, and description, those things that I was talking about before. That is what it means in the Moodle platform to create your badge. It doesn't mean that you put in 
the image, you put in the text, you put in the colors that you need. Those would have to be done before we reach the Moodle platform. So on the Moodle platform, let me just jump across, you know, let me just do a new share and jump with you across to Moodle and Let's go. So when we go to the badges section um, and we need to go under administration. OK, so you'll see manage and you'll see add a new badge. When they talk about add a new badge, the badge has already the, the actual the, um, element has already been created. So here you see you put the name of the badge and you would have already designed the name of the badge and decide the type and the description. So all you would do here when you get to the Moodle platform, because we're, we're using Moodle, is you would put in this kind of detail. So you would put in the name of the badge, you would put in the description. This is where you point out what this badge is being awarded for. And then you upload the image. All right. So you don't create the image here. You have to upload the image and you put in the rest of information. We did talk about the possibility of badge expiry. This is where you would decide whether or not you are going to put an expiry date in. Again, I tend to lean towards never, that the badge never expires. So it is always on the student's profile, but it really depends on the purpose of what it is you're doing when you do your batch, all right? So that's the first thing that we can do on the Orvieli platform. The second thing that we can do, once we have put these badges in, we can then manage them, okay? So when we talk about managing, it means that we have uploaded our badges and what we would do here is that we can decide whether or not we're going to edit, whether or not we're going to close it. You're seeing the icons that I'm pointing towards, yes? Yes. Okay, great. You can decide whether or not you want to copy and make changes to it or whether or not you want to delete if you manually issue badges to students, you can also, if based on reports or in double checking, you can also retract, remove. Um, I'm looking for a particular word. Take it back. You know, so you can remove a badge from a student who has already earned that badge. All right. There's something in the chat. OK, somebody was just responding. All right. So you consider the platform. And so for us, one of the things that we can do, we can track the badges that have been issued. So if you look again at the manage badge aspect, which is right here, you will be able to see on the recipients, the number of persons who have gotten this kind of badge. And this is good information. If you have to do a report or you're doing research about the usefulness or about the population popularity, which badges are more frequent, you know, information about the types of badge. And these are questions, these are badges that will also help you to understand. If it's a tiered case, you can then say, well, clearly the lower level badges are, 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 are more achievable. Maybe I need to look at the activity that it has been assigned to, or maybe this speaks to an area that requires me revisiting for teaching purposes and so forth. You can set up your, your graphs and charts to show that of X number of badges that were given in a class of 23, 25, 26, 100 and odd. These are the number of badges that have been awarded. All right. So when you look here, you see the criteria that is given. It tells us that the badges are available to students. They must complete all of these things. So there are three different things that so so there it's not a standalone badge this one is a badge that is based on, on on different activities so it's not a tiered badge but it is a badge that is awarded after a number of activities are completed and so this information is there that would also help you to to speak to completion levels speak to the the, the range or the variety of activities that are completed. All right, so when you go into manage badges, that helps you big time. 
The other thing about badges, whether you are using an external source at, about digital badges in particular, whether or not you're using a digital strategy platform or if you are using your our own Moodle platform, which is private to an extent, is that you can showcase, okay? So if you are with, say, an open badge, platform and you want to see the extent to which someone has achieved a certain skill set, um, knowledge set, engagement, team, you know, work well with others, you can go and, and, and look at the person's profile and the badges will help you to tell you that this person has done well. And this is one of the reasons why when we're creating badges, we don't just give badges for everything. We have to ensure that we do this kind of planning and deliberation in what it is we do, okay? So we have to ensure that we think it through. So when we give a badge, the badge has a value, especially since badges are moving to the point where they are being considered for micro credential purposes for this in replacing badges, replacing short courses or even long term courses. So we have to ensure that when we plan, it is a strategic and deliberate planning of what these badges mean, what they are representing in terms of achievement or participation. OK, so when we talk about that and we then say, OK, I want to see what this particular person does. Once badges are set up and activated in courses, they are usually aligned to your profile. Well, if the course sets it up so you can have the pro the badges be shown on the, the, the person's profile so that when you're in the course, you can take a look at the person's profile. You don't have to go ask the person, what are the badges you have and what do they mean? Let me show you what I mean. So I am in this course. And if I go to participants, it will show me the list of participants. Okay. Now, if I go, to, I want both. Let me just click on a name. Okay, so I click on this person. Come on, open. Okay, here we go. So I have the information on this person. This tells me the course that the person is in, but these tell me the badges that the person has achieved while on this platform. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it is in this course alone, okay? So on this person's profile, I can see that this person has, you know, mass amassed a number of, of, of badges and the badges sort of give me an information, some information. So orientation to online learning scholar gives me some idea that this person has completed this. I, I don't see anything that speaks to the, um, a, a tiered bit of information, that's because this wasn't set up with any. These are all standalone badges. But if you, I wanted something that had a tier, I would have maybe level one, level two, level three, or, you know, same setup, but different colors, depending on how I would have designed it. So this kind of information tells me that this person has completed a particular unit or is able to do the tracker. This person can manage well the video conferencing aspect. So this kind of information right there, just by looking at the badge, gives me more information than simply saying, oh, the badges are useful because it tells me the type of badge. It tells me the level that the person is on. It gives me how many badges this person has been amass amassing. And it does speak to the kind of, of um, maybe persistence, if you will, um, about the person's diligence. You know, So these are certain things that you can you, you may be able to speak to, not necessarily with 100% certainty, but you can say based on this, it is quite possible that this student does that and, and so forth, especially when you know that if you have 10 badges and this person get nine, it says something, okay? Um, and of course, you can do that with other persons in the course. 
All right. So if I were to click on this person, this person has only one badge, which means that this person has successfully completed only one of the set of activities that are in. Or maybe there was a timer assigned to it and the time has, has expired. It really depends on what it is that was set up. All right. So let me just jump back over to my presentation. <clears throat> um, hello. Yes, go ahead. I, I, I am working alone and I'm using two screens, so I'm not necessarily seeing the hands. So please go ahead. So I was a bit curious if we could click on the name of the bag. Mm -hmm. and oh, it would all right. Somewhere. As in all right, let me... the criteria are, are maybe just a general overview of what the badge all is. Right. So if we click on this badge? Yes. All right. So let's click on it and see. See? Okay. So when we click on it, it does give us the information. It tells us who issued the badge. It gives us what was the name of the badge, what it was given for. It gives us, it tells us about the expiry date. It tells us what the evidence is. So all of that information is there. That's that answers your question? Yes. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Anything else? Not from me. All right. Now, when, if you're creating your own badge, it means that you can go to some places that will help you. All right. Now, we have always focused on premium, on freemium products, meaning there is a free component. And then, of course, there is a paid component. If you go to Canva, you can create your, your, your badges there. You can go to makebadge.s. These are just three that I'm mentioning. You can go to Badge Designer from Accredible. Um, there are other places. I tend to come up with the idea for my badges. I work with PowerPoint a lot for different things apart from just presentation purposes. So I tend to conceptualize my badge, create it in, 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 um, in PowerPoint, save it, and then upload it to the respective platform as, as my badge. So depending on your level of expertise, you can decide to use a site that will help you. So some of these sites will say, first, you do this, first, you next, you do that, then you do that, looking good, okay? There are those that, that simply take you, you know, give you your, the tools and you work your way around. Or if you are comfortable enough to create it yourself, you can use, you can use Publisher, you can use PowerPoint. Some persons are good in Microsoft Words. Work with the tools that you're comfortable with and design. If you know somebody who is good at this, use them. If you want to involve your students, and this is one of the things that we talk about when we talk about inclusion, if you can include your students, you may have students who have this sort of skill set that based on informal discussion or based on diagnostics that you have done, you have found this out, reach out to the students, make them a part of their learning process. They creating the badge doesn't mean that they're going to get the badge. So involve them, use their skill set if you have students like this and acknowledge that they are the ones. So have somewhere on the side that says badges created by and, and, and you name the student or you name the group or, or, or whatever, you know, as I said, give on to Caesar what is due to Caesar. All right. And so that is essentially it when we think about the design aspect. This is not the development or creating digital badges. This is the aspect that we consider before we reach the development component. So we think about within this ecosystem, this framework of digital badges, we have to think about where do we see ourselves when it, within this teaching and learning context here on the Mona campus here in Jamaica, where does our unit, where does our department, where does, does the faculty see itself 
if you are going to go with a system, a structure that, that depends on digital badges? Is it something that can work in your unit? If it can work, how do you proceed from beginning to end? You think about the vision. What exactly do you understand? Are you comfortable with this whole idea of digital badges? Does it scare you a little bit? It's good if something scares you a little bit because, you know, it's a healthy respect for the thing. But if you find that you're intimidated by it, maybe starting a digital strategy right now is not the best thing. Maybe you need to learn a little bit more about it. But consider your context. Consider your reality. And as I said before, consider your the tiers itself. Consider the time. Consider the access. Consider the resources. Consider the expertise. Consider the support system, whether from your students, from your supervisors, from your co-workers. Consider everything before you then say yes. This is something that we want to do. This is something that we have a plan of action. We have our design sheet. We have our strategy sheet. We have put together all the, the, the possibilities. We are cognizant of the, the disadvantages, but we are awed by the advantages and we want to continue. When you have done that, think about the approach that you want to use. Are you using a, a hybrid type of approach that mixes both the competence and the engagement aspect? Or are you using one or the other? Think about that. Think about the type and the purpose. Why are you going to be giving them? Are you going to be giving them only because they get a grade in a quiz or in an activity? Are all, are you also going to be recognizing the process? So you're thinking about competence-based or you're thinking about process-based? So think about that. And then after you have come up with that, you then think about the metadata aspect, okay? All the things that are critical when you're thinking about your badge. So the name of the badge, the description of the badge, the purpose of the badge, the type of the badge, the expiry date, if you're going to put one, if it's, is it a standalone or is it going to be um, something that's based on a tier or a hierarchy? Is the badge going to be awarded based on one activity or a series of activities? When you have done that, you then can think about developing. Get your images. Think about your color scheme. Think about the font that you're using and be consistent with what you do. So the design principles are going to come in play here. Think about your color scheme. Think about your font. Think about readability. Make it large enough so that people can see the information. Put the focus where the focus is due, okay? And then you go onto the platform. This is where you go into your course and you go onto your platform and you then add your badge, put in the details and you manage it. Open it when it is time, put your parameters in place and then you at the end or in the middle or as you go along, look at achievement levels, look at participation levels, send out reminders if you need. Keep the basic engagement of teaching and learning going so that you can have a rich experience and your students can have an engaging, fulfilling experience. Okay, any questions? Any questions? All right, I am happy that there are no questions. I hope that I have not intimidated you, but I really hope that if we're going to be thinking of using digital badges and more and more the literature tells us about the, 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 the potential uses, the benefits of, of badges, and we see that badges are used not just in the education system, but they're being used in just about any entity that you can think of. So I hope that you think about putting a structure in place that if you're going to be using badges you have a clear idea of how to I'm coming to you Heather how to move from point A to point D when you're going to be 
um, assigning your badges. Think also of the motivation aspect behind it, because if students are already motivated, you probably don't want to be giving too many badges that are simply standalone badges. You still want to be able to reward good work and consistent work, but you don't want to give a badge for everything in your course or in your sessions. So again, this is where the reflective component is going to be critical, looking at your students' profile or what you know of them so that you can come up with a structure that benefits those who are extrinsically motivated and that you continue to reward and encourage those who are, are, are um, intrinsically motivated. Your hand was up. Heather, go ahead, please. Yes, I'm glad you mentioned that it has increasing use outside of the classroom because I didn't want to ask my question because I thought it was only for the classroom. <laughs> but I was thinking of using the badge, for instance, for a treasure hunt, right? Um, so it would be more of a participatory type of experience. Mm -hmm. And I wondered, is there another way to hold another platform? Because it's not a class, for instance, or mm -hmm. VLE kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So is there another platform that we could... It's a, it's a UA event, you know what I mean? Um, but we want to use it for more of a... Um, it's more of an EDI kind of focus. So we want people to have What's an engagement. EDI? Um, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, oh, okay. So, so it, that is the focus where we want them to, you know, do certain things, um, mm -hmm. be exposed to certain concepts, etc. cetera. Um, so what other platform can it be hosted on aside from if, on if, the Moodle? Oh, all right. So if the focus yeah. is about... Um, for, for transparency and visibility purposes, yeah. you can you can look at open Mozilla, you can look at open okay. badges, but you don't necessarily need to use that. You can, again, it depends on, on whether or not it's all about visibility. Okay. You can use your you can use your Google Drive. You can use their emails. Okay. You can use their yes. So you can use that kind of information. Because there would be in teams. There would be in teams. So you, you know? can right. right. So we can talk about it some more, but you don't okay. necessarily have to go to a platform unless it's about you showcasing the badges and what they have done there. There are different places that mm. you can do that. You can use an Instagram account, you know. So you okay. can use anything yeah, 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 that yeah. is yeah. online, web-based to display okay. this kind of information. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. But then right, in that case, mm -hmm. um, yeah, go ahead. It's okay. I will probably contact you separately when I think through everything, if that's okay. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> All right. All right I see you. a question here. If badges can be used to encourage students to attend practical skill-based classes. Yes. Again, it depends on how you work out that strategy. So if your purpose is to motivate or to encourage them, think about what kind. I think a tiered approach would be good. So you give like a little teaser and let them know that there is more to come and inform them. If, if, if again, depending on the purpose, you may want to inform them. You may want to say that, you know, in 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 um, lunch and learn session in this particular in this particular <laughs> in this particular activity you have several badges that you can get if you start out here here's level one level two level three so yes you can use it to encourage them to attend the practical base um, classes let me tell you something when I was teaching Spanish at UTEC, I, there is a course that I taught, Spanish Language 1, and it has a compulsory online aspect. The students usually come to the face-to-face, -face, they don't go to the online. When, for those who went to the online, they would go to the online and then they would come to the face-to-face -to, -face to say that they had these issues, even though there were things set up. So each time, and the online had 20%, so they had assessments and so that they had to do. We found out that there were students who were failing because 20% is a whole lot and not everybody would have gotten the 80% or even the 60% that they needed. So we wanted to find out how could we get them to go to the online. All we want them to do is to just go log Again, see what was there. So we used a game-based approach and we capitalized on badges. So we sent them a golden invitation, sent it to their email, told them that they are a lucky winner. They are going to come and simply just to turn up 
to this environment, they would be awarded the new comma badge. We had every student getting a new comma badge. And then when they came in, they realized that there was a place where they could see their badges. So there were students going in and we ensured that we had several activities that they had to do in order to get badges and those students worked. So it depends on how you set it up, but you can get them to attend using your badges. I hope that answers the question. So Yes, it does. Yes, it does. I would like to say thank you very much for coming out. And thank you so much for uh, uh, um, a very meaningful uh, presentation. I have learned a lot. I've always been hearing about these badges, but didn't really know what, know what they were. I probably would consider using them in my practical classes. Um, can I approach anyone at MITS in terms of assisting with, this, with the design and structuring of the badges? I, I am oh. sure you can. They have an instructional um, support unit, okay. so you can reach out to them. But remember okay. that we're also here, and you yes. can also reach out within your unit to see if there is anybody. Anyone who is already yes. using them. Thank yes. you. So use your networking. Yes, thank you. Have a okay. good day, ladies no and gentlemen. Yes, you too, and thank you so much. Bye-bye. My pleasure. Bye-bye.